interesting because I've never had such a big audience before uh, that you've not come to hear about impact or uh, draw print or house of cards or super docker or wrangler but um, risk OSM. Um, we've got a bit of a debate actually in the family about whether it's risk OSM or risk OSM just like is it risk OS like Acorn always used to say <laughs> or risk OS because I tend to say risk OS but I don't know about you. Um, the, the other applications that uh, we've been developing are relevant to this story a little bit because um, when we've attended shows in the past, we've generally supplied the software on CD because people like to have something to take away and uh, you know that the version on there is, is there and if your drive goes wrong, you can always reinstall and all that kind of thing. But I was conscious um, when putting you know these other applications onto the CD that we were only using about 50 megabytes of the 720 megabyte capacity, and probably rather less than that actually. Um, and it seemed an awful waste. And I, I sort of started thinking, well, what can we fill the rest of the CD up with? <laughs> <laughs> It'd have to be something big and useful and uh, some big free data source that we could, you know. So there were a few little ideas there. And, and um, a few uh, years ago, um, we uh, moved to uh, Durham from Dundee and about that time we got interested in a uh, project uh, called um, OpenStreetMap OSM. Uh, you may not have used it, a lot of people haven't, uh, but I'd recommend you go and try. Uh, basically it's the Wikipedia equivalent for maps. It's free data, volunteers putting it all in, um, if you find a mistake in the map you can go in and edit, no problem. Um, now, I know uh, that there are other mapping facilities like Google Maps and Bing and so on, and with uh, some areas of the world, uh, Google Maps have Google Map Maker where you can go in and contribute data to that. But who's allowed to use it? Google. Okay, you can go and get maps from Google Maps, you can see the, the stuff on the screen, but it's bitmaps, uh, you can't reuse the data, easily in other ways, uh, and you certainly can't export draw files, which of course is crucial. So, um, <laughs> OpenStreetMap um, essentially uh, it started in Britain about 10 years ago, and it was originally people with uh, GPS equipment uh, going around tracking roads, paths, and uploading the information uh, into a big server. Um, people writing open source rendering software to turn those into maps. So over the last 10 years, all of that has ballooned and ballooned and got bigger and bigger and bigger. And they've incorporated free sources of data that have been imported from other places. A certain amount of government data might get released in different countries. Um, and it's a very, very big um, project. And the reason we got really interested in it when we moved to Durham, um, if you don't know the city of Durham, um, the centre of it is riddled with uh, footpaths. Uh, if you don't know your way around with the footpaths, you don't know when your way around. If you want to buy a map which shows the footpaths in Durham, well, you can forget A to Z, it doesn't go to enough detail. Um, oh, oh, um, uh, ordnance survey, well, yes, if you went higher than one in 25,000, you'd be able to see, but you can't easily buy higher than one in 25,000. So, um, actually, the best map for Durham is OpenStreetMap. Google doesn't come anywhere near, nowhere near on the footpaths or anything like that. So, um, we, we got interested in it. Hillary started contributing to it. We found that where we went on holiday in Wales wasn't very well mapped, so she got out her phone, a uh, little app on the phone. You can track where you are, note down when you're crossing a stile in a field, and where, note down the shop that you visit to and later you can upload it with, a, with an editor on your Linux box or your PC or whatever. So we, we were interested in OpenStreetMap and I, I, I think it was about a year and a bit ago at the London show, I was talking to, it was a show where the um, Raspberry Pi uh, for Riscos had just been released and I was talking to Theo Marquetos and um, I was saying to him, I'd like to do something with OpenStreetMap, maybe giving people a CD for the draw files of bits of the country or something, because you could just reuse them for whatever you like. Um, well, Hillary started thinking about this idea, and she thought, well, we can do better than that. We don't want static draw files. Can't we just 
create the draw files on the fly from the data. Um, and I was a bit skeptical. I thought, well, golly, that's probably quite, quite intensive computationally. I mean, there's a lot to do. Um, but year of development, um, on and off, and we have a product. Here it is. Um, now, this is where I have to demonstrate um, how we do the searching. What we've done is we've taken the, um, downloaded the data from the 1st of April for the British Isles. It's 1.3 gigabytes of data. What you get in OpenStreetMap um, is a list of points, nodes. You get the latitude and the longitude. Um, and you may get other information such as this is a bus stop or this is a post box or there may be no information because maybe the node is only there because it is part of a way and a way is a connected line of nodes which might be then marked up to say that it's a residential highway or it might be marked up to say it's a railway line or it might be marked up to say that it's the boundary of some woodland or a field or a river or anything and then there's another whole set of things on top of that called relations which can have ways and nodes as members uh, and can describe things which might be chopped up into bits you know or you might have a you might have a lake which has an island in it so the water is only the bit round the island it's got a hole in you can't do that just with an outline you've got to have two outlines and say well this is the inside and that's the outside and, and the bit in between is is water um, so it's it's that's how it's structured in OpenStreetMap. When you download the file, you get a list of all the nodes, followed by a list of all the ways and the nodes that are in them, followed by a list of all the relations and what members are in the relations. And the order that they're in is the first one that was created in OpenStreetMap is first in the file. So <laughs> if you're wanting the data for a particular bit of the country, you would have to look through an awful lot of information to try and find, first of all, all the nodes which fall within that geographical area. And then you need to look through all the ways to see which ones have nodes which are in that area. And, you know, it's, it's tough. So a big part of the work was developing some conversion software to restructure all of that data into a form which was suitable to digest. Uh, and I did that bit. And I had several false starts about how to do it because we got it working fairly well and then we found, golly, it's slow. Um, and so what we've come up with, the whole country is divided up into squares and the, the I can't remember how many miles wide they are, um, it's a certain number of decimal points of latitude, I think. Um, and um, in that square, there's all the information for that square. But it is further subdivided by layers so that um, there's a top layer which has motorways in, things like that, which are on all of the maps. And then further down, much further down, there are um, residential streets, and further down there are houses, and further down, you know, there's all sorts of really minor features that you wouldn't be able to see on the map until you zoomed in really close. And as part of the processing, we identify all of the places that's named on the maps, and this is the starting point for opening a map. So, I'll start off with Durham. We can search. We've digested, sorry, I'll do that slowly, and you can see. Right, here's everywhere beginning with D. U, in the British Isles. Search. You can move up and down with the cursor keys. You can press return. You can click with the mouse. It selects a suitable scale based on whether the place is a city or a town or a village. So it'll do a um, larger scale map for a village than for a city. I can never remember whether it's larger or smaller. <laughs> anyway, um, and then we click and it will load. It'll go and pull data off the CD or off the disk. I've copied it all onto the hard drive. It's about 600 megabytes. And oh, there it is already. I didn't have to talk too much to distract your attention because there we are. There is Durham. Um, and when you've got the map, you can do all the standard things like uh, drag out an area, zoom in a bit, use the scroll mouse, perhaps you're interested in this bit over here, put your mouse there, scroll mouse in, it'll redraw, scroll mouse out a bit. Uh, you can double click um, to move in. 
Uh, you can use the plus and the minus sign to move in and out. Um, so you can dra drag them out sideways. If there's any point while it's rendering you decide you want to change your mind, you, you know, it'll, it'll respond. We try to make it responsive because obviously it's not instant. This is doing something quite hard. It's not just serving up bitmaps across the internet. This is digesting data, turning it into a draw file, putting it all on screen. Um, it's not pre-processed like what you have with Google Maps. It's pre-processed to make it easy to find the data, but it's still got to do all of that work of working out where all the roads go, which ones to draw first, how to draw all of these buildings, how to fit the text along the roads, um, and basically all of that kind of stuff. Um, I'm actually amazed how fast this is sometimes. It can get a bit slower if you've had it been running for a while. We found that during the demos because we do try and throw out data as you wander about different bits of the country. But um, I think it's not fully tuned yet. We can do some more work on that. Um, so if I quit and restart from time to time, just excuse me, I'm, I mean, I am using it in rather unusual circumstances. So um, that's, that's the basics. Um, but uh, what else can we do? Um, well, first of all, there can be extra information about um, objects. There's a whole series of tags and values sort of behind all of this data on the map. Um, so um, here, I mean, all it's telling you there is it's got a point with an ID. That's the ID it has in OpenStreetMap. It's a school. Um, it's called Durham School. We wander over here, however. It's a place of worship. It's an Anglican um, place of worship. Um, it has a <coughs> website, UNESCO World Heritage Site website. Um, there is an image available from Commons Wikipedia Org, um, Christian as well as Anglican. Uh, tourism <laughs> attraction, <laughs> etc., etc. Wikipedia. So if we um, control click on this, we will get a list of all of those websites and we can go and uh, see a picture. There we are. But of course, that's only there if it's been contributed by one of these volunteer mappers. Um, so the, the, there's all sorts of information there. Some of it, I even don't know what it is. You know, you, 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 you wander over things and some sort of weird code, and you think, well, what on earth is that? Mm -hmm. Now, um, I can tell you what some of them are, because we have also converted um, the, uh, the Netherlands, because we, we know that there's a customer who comes over from the Netherlands to wait for a show every year. And uh, we thought, well, he might like the Netherlands rather than the British Isles. The Netherlands, although it's a much smaller area of country, it's actually got about, about the same amount of data as the British Isles because they've got very detailed information on land use and an awful lot of information on buildings. So it's very, very detailed. Um, over here, there is a windmill. And you'll see it says MDB ID 649. And I thought, what on earth is that? So I looked up MDB. Turns out to be the Mullen database, <laughs> um, windmill database. Um, so, so we have put something in the code. So if you can control click over this, there was a Wikipedia link, but also you can look it up in the Mullen database NL. And here is the information about this particular windmill. Um, and, and there we are. So there's a whole load of different bits of information in OpenStreetMap. Um, now at the moment, that link is hardwired in, in that we know that MDBID, we want to provide a link to the Windmill database. There may be other information in there which we haven't identified yet, where people might want to link to something. Um, we hope in a future version to make it uh, possible to write little plugins in Lua or some other kind of code or some kind of descriptive language where you can say, if there is a such and such attribute in this object, I want to offer a link to whatever. Um, but at the moment, uh, that's, that's not possible if we've just put in certain, certain features that we know about. Um, the other thing that you might want to do with some of this information um, is uh, design different style sheets of map. Because um, the great thing about having a vector map is that you can render it differently depending on what you want. This is near where my uh, parents-in-law live in Newcastle. And um, this is our standard rendering of the map. It's, a, it's not 
highly detailed. It doesn't have buildings on at too small a scale because that can take quite a while to render. Um, but you get the roads and the railways and uh, ponds and golf clubs and all that kind of thing. Um, now we've got a star sheet here, which is um, tweaked a little bit to turn to size railways. So it's rendering all of the roads in a greyish sort of colour. The railways are picked out and they're in different colours. Why is that? Well, we've picked up on the fact that for this railway line it says electrified contact line and uh, voltage 25,000. So we've put that in red. This railway line here, freight line, is not electrified, so that's just the same in black. This orange one here is part of the Newcastle Metro system, uh, which um, is electrified to 1500 volts, uh, again with overhead wire. So you can design your own style sheet to pick out extra information that might be lurking in these objects and put it on the map. You can put symbols on for different sorts of things. One thing we haven't done for golf courses, some of the golf courses in this country actually have the bunkers and the fairways and everything uh, notated up. We haven't provided any um, style sheet for rendering golf courses. If anyone wants to do it, you will be able to do it. And as I know, we can include it uh, in with the application. Um, that would be great. Um, yeah, so, the style sheets, by the way, aren't documented yet because we've had such a lot of work getting this ready for the show um, that we haven't quite had time to write all of the documentation. But there is, um, there is a manual which uh, shows you a fair amount of information about you know, how, to use the, how to use the map and so on. Now, as well as, um, as well as that information box which pops up, which can give you extra information about things and help you if you're designing style sheets, there's also a little search feature uh, which I'm just going to switch to another place. Uh, I'll go to Beeston, where my parents live. Um, OpenStreetMap can sometimes be very up to date. Now, the problem, of course, is that we've converted the data from the 1st of April, and uh, that's what you get on the CD. It doesn't go online to fetch up anything more up to date yet. Um, what we're intending to do is release the software that does the remerging, you know, restructuring of the data so that anyone will be able to download any country they wish and uh, convert it into the form suitable for use with RISC OSM and you'll be able to do it as frequently as, want, as you want to. Um, the British Isles, uh, we have been experimenting with Nottinghamshire, we've been experimenting with other bits of the country that we knew, like parts of Wales, uh, in getting the whole thing working, converting a small chunk of data. Um, that was fine. We downloaded the whole of the British Isles from scratch again, 1st of April, and started it converting for the final release uh, for this show. And the estimated time on the converter, it was saying, I can't remember how many hours, but when you divide it by 24, you still need it to divide by seven and think, oh dear, we haven't got that many weeks left. <laughs> um, so the first thing we did was buy a panda board, <laughs> get something a bit faster. Um, Andrew Rawnsley was able to supply next day, so CGA lost out because they quoted two or three days. Um, I'm sure the Panda Row would have been just as good, but uh, Andrew got it to us a bit quicker. Um, we, we started running on that. Yes, it was going to get done in time for the show, but by goodness me, it's still going to take ages. So I then started rethinking the data structure, the conversion process, and did a lot of intensive work in the last fortnight. Um, which resulted in, a, we've now got a 12 hour process for the British Isles, which is a lot better, but it's probably not the kind of thing you want to tie up with your computer with every, every week. So uh, that's why we're issuing it all on CD for the moment, and we'll be doing further updates in the future. I hope we'll be able to produce some way of downloading changes rather than having to do the whole lot, but we'll, that's all in the future, we're not sure how it's going to work. So anyway, here's Beeston. Sorry, we're still in the railway view, um, which, um, We'll, we'll put some more detail in. Now, uh, oh, oh, oh dear, mm. dearie me. That's, uh, that's, that's an interesting one. Wait a minute, let me zoom out again. I probably ought to bookmark that for Hillary so that uh, uh, she, yeah, she better solve that bookmark, that, that bug, right. Um, I 
not had one of those for a little bit. We were having a few a few days ago with, with yeah, it's been a lot of bugs solved. Anyway, um, we'll, we'll zoom in a bit on this area. And it's funny because based on the bit we've looked at a few times. Oh no, dear, this is terrible. <laughs> okay, right, right, let's try again, let's try again. Um, I'm wondering whether it's maybe got something in it that's uh, causing trouble. Okay, we're all right this time. We've been demoing all morning and not had a crash. <laughs> Actually, no, we've not been demoing all morning, we've been burning CDs. <laughs> um, now, OpenStreetMap can sometimes be very up to date. At the moment in Beeston, uh, the Nottingham tram is being extended. Yeah. And as you can see here, we have a uh, tram track uh, there. And after that, it's dotted lines because it's under construction. Um, Every now and then, if you go and look at OpenStreetMap on the web, you'll see that, they've, that someone has added a bit more of the tram track as it's being laid. There's a little bit down here. So, I mean, there, there are, yeah, exactly. Um, there, are, there are people who are fanatical about all sorts of different things, and they are putting all sorts of different things into this database. We found that, you know, I mean, we, we had to sort of do a scan of the whole data because um, we needed to keep it down to CD size. Um, and... Um, we found that uh, there was quite a lot of stuff that we thought, oh, no one's ever going to want that. So I'm afraid we have chucked out information about um, sh lighting for shipping and boys and things around the sea. Oh, um, <laughs> we, have, we have chucked out detailed information about uh, bus stops. Uh, the bus stops are in, and and we also have the codes for the bus stops. There is a thing called, let me just show you, there's a thing called the um, NAPTAN code. You see NTSGM TWM, you know, great stuff. Uh, but that does actually mean that uh, we can offer a control click and it will show you the next departures from that bus stop, except it looks like the uh, laptop has gone off. Never mind. We did have internet a moment ago, and it does, it, it does do it. Um, sorry, let me just, uh... <coughs> yeah, that's working. Perhaps it's just the bus stop sites that aren't working. Oh, there we are. Right, here we go. So, no bus, no bus is due at this time. Not surprisingly, because the road is dug up for the tram. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, that was useful. <laughs> um, Anyway, um, obviously this is slightly squashed because of the screen. It's, it is, it's not quite square. What you get there is an A4, basically about an A4, with about a centimetre taken off for margins. So you can take this and explore it and drop it straight into draw. And um, there you have... Um, come on. Where's it gone? I'm not very good at dropping accurately, I think. There we are. Right. So there you are in draw, you can go and uh, select something, uh, move it out of the way if you don't like the Catholic Church. Um, <laughs> and, uh, or you can add your own information. Um, so, the... Uh, <laughs> oh, where am I up to? Um, and, and as well as that, you can highlight features. Um, it's, it's not going to be possible to search across the whole of the country for features of any kind. Uh, we've indexed all of the places uh, because that's a very quick way into the, into the interface. Uh, but uh, when you've got a map loaded, uh, you can view uh, anything uh, such as uh, where are there post boxes, and it will highlight post boxes on the map. Um, if you want to find out, you know, where is there a, a war memorial? Well, there's one there for the Crimean War, one down here for the First World War and the Second World War, etc. Um, grade 2, apparently, listed building. Um, this one has quite a lot of detail. This monument was erected by the inhabitants of Easton to perpetuate the memory of those who... Well, it's... Uh, goodness me. Actually, that's going running off the screen. We haven't got it wrapping yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So th there's there's a whole variety of information in there. It very much depends on the on the area of the country. Another great one. Here's part of the Netherlands. Um, someone has gone to a lot of trouble. Uh, it looks beautiful. This when it loads. Uh, someone has gone to a lot of trouble to map this theme park. <laughs> 
railway light rail and it's wheeling round and round. Uh, you know, it's uh, amazing stuff. Um, we can go in. There you are. Do you want to go on that? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> um, control click and look, we can look it up in the roller coaster database. <laughs> <laughs> if it works. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so there we are. Um, now, um, I mentioned bookmarks. As you can see, we've got bookmarks. Uh, you can add and edit bookmarks. Uh, the bookmarks can contain the latitude and longitude, the scale that you want it to display at. You can set the style sheet you want to use if you have a particular style in mind for that area and want to, otherwise it will just use whatever you've got set. Um, there is a history feature. Uh, you can do uh, F8 to go back and F9 to go forwards, uh, like undo and redo. Uh, but there is also F7, uh, where you can get up a little thumbnail of what you've been viewing. Uh, copied blatantly from the most excellent web browser there is for ISCOS. Uh, I, I like their um, you know, history feature up there, which shows me nothing, because I must have closed it. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's modelled after that. Um, we have, I mentioned the style sheets, um, language, let's... Uh, uh, let's get back to the map again. Um, then our bridge. Uh, this, the, the, because it's a very international database, people will put on information about the names of places uh, and features uh, in a lot of different languages if they feel so inclined. Uh, now in Wales, uh, the place names predominantly have been entered in Welsh uh, for, the, for the native uh, language, but there are English alternatives very often being added for English spellings of place names. Some places, however, are sufficiently known by the English name to appear in, in English on the map. So this one here, this is Bangor just here, and just over the Menai Straits, uh, there's a little place called uh, Menai Bridge, um, which is by the Menai Bridge. Seems to be more than one Menai Bridge these days. Um, Anyway, there's Manai Bridge, but if you wish, uh, through the choices, you can choose your preferred language on the map. Uh, and if you prefer English, uh, we can then set that, and it'll re-render the map. Um, oh, got it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. To re-render the map, and we will see. Or something or other. Oh, dear me. This is getting very slow. What's it doing? Railway line's coming in. Right, here we go. And eventually, when we get to place names, you will see that it says... <laughs> <coughs> this is much more entertaining when you're not having to wait. Um, but it will say, Man, I bridge still. Good grief, wait a minute. Did I not choose? That's not very good. I chose English. You that was not very much good. Was, someone should have stopped me. Uh, <laughs> now we're going to have to see it all again. <laughs> <laughs> it will say it in Welsh. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. Uh, anyway, the place name search. The place name search also has uh, other languages in it. We've had to strip out some of the data, as I mentioned, to cut it down to something manageable. It did have uh, names of various prominent places in Britain, and Chinese, and Russian, and all sorts of other languages. Even if you, if you look at uh, Piccadilly Circus Underground Station, it, for some reason, um, it's down in English, but also someone has entered it in Esperanto. <laughs> Just to, um, you know, since it's the only one, but... <laughs> so, uh, we've cut out the Esperanto, I'm afraid. We've retained... English, Welsh, uh, Gaelic, Manx, Irish, Cornish, French, Dutch, and German for the moment. Um, but when the conversion software is out, you'll be able to make your own selections. Um, so if you put in, if you put in Londres, uh, there, you, there you have uh, Londres, and it describes the whole rest, and then the rest of it in okay. French, where it can, uh, on the assumption that you must be preferring French. So um, there we are. Uh, anyway, um, I have a list of things that RISCOSM is not 
four. It is not good yet for zooming out a long way. We have on our poster on the um, stand an outline of the British Isles, uh, blue background, white foreground. We used a special coastline style sheet um, which um, doesn't render anything apart from the coastline. I think possibly Hillary tweaked the code slightly so it didn't attempt to load. Yeah, I can't remember what, how she did that. It was a slight cheat. It's not good for zooming out a very long way. Um, the coastline, if you think about it, is very intricate. Mm -hmm. If you're wanting to load all of that coastline data and then put something approximate on the page, that's going to take a long time. For one thing, you've got to work out as the coastline is chopped up into little chunks, <coughs> you've got to join them all together, first of all, to make sure you can draw the outline. So it's very time consuming. Hillary has some ideas about how we could pre-process that and include some of that information pre-processed to speed it up. But for the moment, it's not good at zooming out a long way. It's very good, very close in. It's not too bad at 150,000, maybe a bit further out than that. Um, it is not finished. There, there is a bug, as we thought. <laughs> We're not sure that it's checking out data as thorough as it ought to. I think the memory is probably getting a bit entangled sometimes uh, because it's having to do so much churning around and loading stuff and throwing it away and doing all this kind of thing. We would like, we have lots of ideas for extra features. We would like to be able to drag out uh, an area on the map and export just that bit as a draw file at whatever scale you want so that it you know, I mean, at the moment it's an A4 sheet, but perhaps you want to print out something A2 and you want it at a really high scale, um, and low scale, whatever, uh, at an appropriate scale. <laughs> it would be nice to be able to drag out that area and say, well, actually, I'd like that at one in 5,000, please, um, and, and then it could do it. So that, that's an obvious enhancement. Um, we, we would like to provide uh, more style sheets so that for the uh, uh, power line aficionados. Um, there are there are there are uh, power lines in the country where people have recorded what type of pylon <laughs> there is <laughs> holding up the power lines because there are some people who are even nerdier than we are. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, you know, so, so some more style sheets would be nice. Uh, it would be nice to have a graphical way of editing the style sheets. I mean, an obvious thing to do would be to say, okay, maybe choosing what's on the map, um, some tick boxes to turn off all of the churches and all of the hairdressers and turn on all of the pubs or whatever. Yeah. Um, or you might, you might want to be able to, okay, I don't like the colours for these roads. Uh, let's change all of those to a different colour and some sort of palette kind of editor. That would be, that should be possible, but it's not done yet. There's sort of loads of ideas. We've got ideas about how you could link it into other applications. I mean, I want to be able to launch it from Impact, so you've got some place information in Impact with the latitude and longitude, and be able to click a button and launch the map. Uh, that's an obvious thing to do. It'd be nice to go the other way, mark a place on the map and push it into a database, push it into Organizer, push it into Impact, push it into Data Power, put, you know, do, do something like that with it. Um, it'd be nice to be able to accept a file. Someone was asking about um, GPS tracking. He wanted to map um, uh, yacht races, dinghy races, sailing, sailing races mm -hmm. where they got trackers. You know, it'd be nice to be able to load the data and overlay it on top of the map of the lake. Uh, there are and different colours for the different boats or something like that. That would be really good. Um, interacting with other databases, you know, being able to s display a map where you put markers on with some text, you know, so and so lived here from 1840 to 1873, or you know, um, all, all of that kind of thing is would technically be within the bounds of possibility. Um, and with a resource like this, it, you could do some quite exciting stuff. So if there are any software developers in the audience who have ideas, talk to us, because we'd like to develop uh, ways of doing things which will make it easy for other people to, to plug in to the system. And if there are any users who have interesting ideas, talk to us or talk to other developers and say, you know, I'd like to be able to do this with it. Because um, it's really, it could be quite an enabling technology, you know, you could do all sorts of things possibly with this information. Uh, but, but, but I think probably I'd better stop there, and if anyone has any questions, 
I can take them. <coughs> yeah. Uh, is it possible to put a track on and get a GPS track file from? It isn't, but that would be a really good idea, and I have thought about that because I would like to be able to trace on a map of. Well, this is a really bad example because I wouldn't be wanting to cycle along that road. <laughs> uh, but um, you know, I would like to be able to you know go click 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 click, click, click and get it to tell me at least how long that combination of way ways is. You know, it doesn't have contour information in, uh, so it's not so good for walking or cycling. There is. There is free contour information available. We haven't tried downloading it. We haven't tried converting it. Goodness me, about rendering it. I mean, um, especially if you could try and go for the beautifully shaded kind of stuff. I mean, yeah, we're, we're not going to go for that very soon. But yeah, it'd be good to be able to, to plot out a route and, and download it. Uh, but for that, I, I need to know what's the format for the file. If you know what the format of the file is, send us an example one, and we'll try and work out how we produce that. Yeah, that'd be good. Oops, or GPSs. Right. German website where you do that. Okay. Point us to it. <laughs> I might not get the right one first. Have you looked at streetmap.co.uk? Streetmap.co.uk is another of these um, bitmap um, websites like uh, Google Maps and so yeah. on. It's all it's all bitmap data. Um, I do usually as part of my impact demo, do a little demonstration about how you can feed a URL with a postcode in and it'll pop up with the right map and street map. But I was saying, I mean the reason for having a look at that is because of the different forms you can get for input and output. So That's get, true. You can get longer to latitude, you can get national grid latitude. Yeah. National grid national, national grid is thing on your map, which is very, very useful. National grid reference is something I would like to do. Um, National Grid uh, use, is obviously the only British Isles. There's a similar sort of grid for, for, for the Netherlands, so you have to do it country by country. Um, National Grid uses a different spheroid, spheroid model of the Earth. Uh, when you think about latitude and longitude, it's not that simple. <laughs> there's latitudes and longitudes and there's lots of different sources. But we've got, we've got the formulas. I've been to a website where they've got the formulas converting from National Grid to the kind of latitudes and longitudes that's typically used in this online kind of mapping and GPS and so on. So we'll be adding that, definitely be adding that. Postcodes, tricky. Um, OpenStreetMap does have what's called um, postcode centroids for the, for the British Isles. So if you want... DH1, it can tell you where the centre of DH1 is. If you want LL36, it can tell you where that is. OpenStreetMap doesn't have information in any more detail than that. Not always, unless people have put it on for a particular address, because some of these places with houses where the address has got the details of the actual postcode or the address as well as the house number. I mean, if you go to... Um, I'm going to go to Durham again. go quite close in. Um, but um, So there is postcode data in there, but indexing all of that, I'm not sure how big it would be, um, but we could look at that because it's an obvious thing to add along with place names. Um, yeah, marking on the map with little arrows. Right? Yeah, we well, definitely want to do little arrows. <laughs> Everyone wants little arrows. Um, <laughs> um, so, so little arrows interact with so, so here's a here's a street well. here's a street with uh, with house number houses have been mapped and house numbers are on. You get masses of detail in London. London can be quite slow to render because there's an awful lot of detail because there's a lot of people with smartphones. Lots of people contributing to OpenStreetMap. Um, areas of the country where there are fewer smartphones, the, the, the mapping is less good. If you go to Nenthead in the uh, in the Pennines. It's pretty good now, but that's because I went through it on the C2C -C bike ride and mapped it with my smartphone in the evening that we were staying there. So it's a lot better than it was. But the other villages around there, not so good because no one's been in Dublin. <laughs> Any more questions? Do you see this evolving into a full-blown <coughs> GIS? Oh, good grief. Uh, well, it's going to evolve. Uh, we'll put in more features. Uh, I don't know when we're going to stop. <laughs> But uh, I've never used a full-blown GIS, and I don't know, um, I mean, it's, the data is structured in a way which makes it quick for, well, moderately quick, for rendering bits of the country as a map. But a proper GIS would be indexing all sorts of other things, so you'd be able to pull out quickly all of the, um, all of the cathedrals, 
and find latitudes and longitudes of them and that kind of thing. That's not going to be very uh, easy to do computationally. Um, if you were going to structure the data in a way that could allow that kind of query, it would take up a lot more room um, on disk. Um, however, it may be possible to uh, use to build on uh, things where you could interact with some of the services which are online, because OpenStreetMap does have an online API, and it might be possible to fire off queries to it for some of the kinds of things that people want to do, and then get back the information and pinpoint things on the map and so on. So the, there are a lot of possibilities, and we'd be very interested for people to just tell us what they would like to do. And we'll see what we can manage to do, depending on when Hillary, whether Hillary wants to stay up to midnight any longer, but, uh, which is what she's been doing for the most, of, most of the last three months. But <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, yeah, it's been a it's it's been a very very complicated. It's a very very complicated program. Um, and um, yeah, my brother-in-law uh, saw it the other day. He was visiting. He said. He said, it's a pity you're writing it for risk OS, he said, because I mean, other people might be quite, you know, there's a lot of other people who quite like to use this kind of thing, right? No, if you write, that's not well. You're, you're just lucky we're writing it for risk OS, I mean, that's all, that's all I can say. It's a hobby, and uh, that's, the, that's the platform we do our hobby on. So. What happens is um, the, the satellite, the sat oops. The satellite imagery from Bing has been licensed so that you can use it as a layer in the OpenStreetMap editor. Uh, there's also various out of copyright mapping that is available as a layer. So if you're interested in OpenStreetMap, you sign up for an account and there are a couple of different ways of editing. There's a flash-based editor called Potlatch, which was written by someone I used to know in the Amstrad CPC days back in the 1980s. Um, and, um, the, there is also a Java-based editor which runs on PC and Linux and everything uh, called JOSM. And uh, in these editors, you download a portion of the data from the server. It renders it in a very outline-y kind of way. Uh, and you can have overlays of uh, other data, satellite imagery, out of copyright open uh, ordnance survey, <coughs> other stuff like that. So you can although a lot of it's done with GPS for the, for the tracking, and certainly the original data was mainly GPS, um, people are drawing outlines on satellite imagery. You have to be very careful with satellite imagery because the problem is the Bing imagery particularly isn't from directly overhead. It's from somewhere further south. So the offset between the latitude and longitude and uh, where the thing actually is on the ground depends on the elevation of the ground. So if you go around Durham, there's a lot of things which are slightly out compared with the satellite imagery because the satellite imagery is from an angle. You can see the size of the cathedral. I better stop because it's CG. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.